University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Tonight we take another step down the long and winding road that leads to the semi-finals of this competition. Last time we saw Magdalen College Cambridge win the first of the two quarter-final victories our serpentine rules require of the eight teams still standing. Tonight's winners will find themselves in the same position, but the losers will have to play again and win in order to remain in the contest. Now, the team from Balliol College, Oxford, beat Clare College, Cambridge by 150 to 135 in their first round match, and another Cambridge College, St John's, in the second. That match turned out to be a right old ding dong after their opponents finally woke up and gave them the match they deserved. But in the final minutes, questions on flightless birds, sodium bicarbonate and wasabi put them on 200 to St. John's 155. With an average age of 26, let's meet the Balliol team again. G'day, I'm Ben. I'm from Perth in Western Australia and I recently completed a master's degree in law. Hi, I'm Solen. I'm originally from Bath and I'm studying classics. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Michael from Blackheath in London. I've just finished a degree in philosophy and politics. I'm just about to start a graduate degree in philosophy, also at Balliol. Hi, I'm Lily from Leamington Spa in Warwickshire and I'm reading for a DPhil in history. Now, the team from King's College London beat the University of York by 170 points to 100 in round one. They then met Glasgow University in the second round and during a rather characterful match, proved stronger than their opponents on Fossils and the FA Cup, ending with 175 points to Glasgow's 90. With an average age of 23, let's meet the King's College team again. Hi, I'm Simon from Wellington in South London, and I'm studying for a PhD in cardiovascular science. Hi, I'm Louis. I'm from England and New England, and I'm studying politics, philosophy and law. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm from the eastern extremity of Somerset, and I'm just finishing my degree in War Studies and History. Hello, I'm Grace. I'm from Bournemouth on the South Coast and I'm reading medicine. <laughs> OK, you all know the rules, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. And your first starter for ten. What is the first word of all of the following poems? Edward Thomas's Lights Out, Browning's Two in the Campania, Hardy's The Darkling Thrush, Michael Rosen's Chocolate Cake, W.B. Yeats's The Lake Isle of Innisfree and Wordsworth's Daffodils. Balliol O'Connor. I. I is correct, yes. <laughs> so you get a set of bonuses there on world cultures. What Jewish holiday does the Bible term the Sabbath of Sabbaths? Observed on the tenth day of the month of Tishri, it traditionally involved the ritual of the scapegoat. Is it... Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, possibly. Yeah. Should we I get mean, it? Yeah, it feels like a Sabbath of Sabbath. Yeah, I think Ethan. so. Uh, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is correct. The Day of Atonement. Followers of which Indian religion ask forgiveness for misdeeds on the last day of the Pari Ushan festival? It advocates non-violence in all circumstances, and Mahavira is a central figure. Jainism. Jainism. Mm. Jainism. Jainism is correct. What practice of Roman Catholicism offers some remission of the punishment of sin? Historically, this was often in exchange for donations and was the focus of Martin Luther's 95 Theses. Oh, it's what are they called? The things that the pardoner sells in Chaucer? Yeah. What are they Alms? called? No. Not absolution. No. No, it's... Pardon. Indulgences? Indulgences, that's it. Indulgence. Indulgences. Indulgence is correct, yes. Right, a starter question now. One of the sea peoples that invaded Egypt in 1190 BCE, what people, possibly of Cretan origin, settled Bailey in the East... Connor. The Hyksos? Now, you lose five points. Possibly of Cretan origin, settled in the eastern Mediterranean, establishing a confederacy of cities including Gaza and Ashdod. Their representatives in the Bible include Goliath and Delilah. King's tricks. Philistines. Philistine is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on Irish sports venues. 
Firstly, born in 1823, which churchman played a leading role in both the Irish National Land League and the Gaelic League? A major sports stadium in Dublin is named after him. Oh, is this going to be Mr Croke? Is it Croke Park? Yeah. Yeah. Croke? It was Archbishop Croke, as he was more so, formally yes. known. <laughs> <laughs> And secondly, the major Gaelic sports stadium in Belfast is named after which diplomat who, after exposing human rights abuses in the Congo and Peru, was executed for seeking German military support for the Easter Rising? Oh, um... Michael... It's not Michael Collins, is it? No. Well, I might have guessed that. Right. Yeah. It's not him, but... Yeah, Michael Collins. No, it was Sir Roger Casement, as in Casement Park. Uh. What is the former name of the home of the Irish national rugby team? It derived from the name of the Marquisate created for the Dublin board prime minister, the Earl of Shelburne. Well, it's now um, a particular insurance provider, which I probably shouldn't say. Um, I don't know what... Um, your guess is as good as any of us. Yeah, I know, um, but I did know it. Do something generic? Uh, Irish-born Prime Ministers. Uh, Wellington. Uh, the Westmeath Stadium. No, it was the Lansdowne Road Stadium. <laughs> Ten points for this. Meaning fail in a duty or offend, what term did Parliament apply to those who assisted the King during the civil wars from 1642? In modern usage, it commonly denotes a young person involved in minor crime. <laughs> King's Triggs. Delinquent. Delinquent is correct. <laughs> Three questions on Kathleen Lonsdale, one of the first women to be elected a Fellow of the Royal Society. Firstly, born in 1903, early in her career, Lonsdale was research assistant to which Nobel laureate, who, along with his son Lawrence, pioneered X-ray crystallography? Pauling, is it? <laughs> what was that? It's not Pauling, is it? Pauling, father-son pairs that have won Nobel Prizes. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to nominate you. So, nominate Weaver. Pauling? No, it was William Henry Bragg. Noted for her um, own work on the structures of penicillin and vitamin B12, which scientist described Lonsdale as appearing to own the whole of crystallography in her time? Uh, was that the woman who's got the bill in after What, Franklin? Her? Yeah. Uh, did she do penicillin and B12? I don't think so. Yeah. She did the... She did a lot of crystallography work. Okay, well, all right. Yeah, Franklin? No, that was Dorothy Hodgkin. Ah. Finally, in 1929, Lonsdale used X-rays to prove definitively that the carbon atoms are coplanar and hexagonally arranged in what hydrocarbon? Hydrocarbon's going to be um, cyclohexane. Yeah, yeah benzene. Yeah. Benzene. Benzene is correct. <laughs> We're going to take a picture around for your picture starter. You'll see a representation of the border between two countries shown in isolation along with its approximate length. Ten points if you can name the two countries. King Zhu. Uh, Russia and... Sorry. Balliol Schofield. France and Germany. No, it's not. It's Argentina and Chile. There's the whole thing, as you can oh. see. So we'll take the picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this. The marches, the places in between, and occupational hazards. Malia O'Connor. Rory Stewart. Rory Stewart is correct, yes. <laughs> the border between Argentina you saw a moment ago, it's one of the longest continuous land borders in the world. Your picture bonuses are three more of the world's longest national borders. Name the two neighbouring countries in each case. Firstly... Is that, like, maybe the US and Canada? Is it uh, Iran? No, it's possibly... China, oh, China. Mongolia. Ch yes. China and Mongolia. Russia. Russia. That China sounds right. Mongolia, yeah. Yeah. China and Mongolia. Correct. Let's see the whole thing. There we are. Secondly... Okay, that looks a bit like Australia, that, but it's definitely it, not. Uh, maybe somewhere like... somewhere in the Central Asia, perhaps. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uzbek Kazakhstan has quite a big border. With... Something or Russia? quite a, bit, a lot of Kazakhstan. Possibly, yeah. Kazakhstan and Russia. Or Afghanistan and Russia. Kazakhstan and Russia. No, it's Brazil and Bolivia. Let's see the whole thing there. And finally, China and Russia. 
Surely. Yeah. Yeah, it's the right angle, isn't it? Maths yeah. are very long. China and Russia? No, that is Russia and Kazakhstan. Oh. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Right, ten points for this. In astronomy, what two-word term denotes an expanding shell of luminous gas expelled by a dying star? King's Jackson. Solar flare. No. Aerial Schofield. Planetary nebula. Planetary nebula is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the lesser-known works of Charles Darwin. Drawing on his observations in the Pacific on HMS Beagle, Darwin's first monograph concerned, quote, the structure and distribution of what type of ecosystem? Reefs. He went to the Galapagos. Yeah, it was with finches that he was finches. studying, wasn't he? But so that's not what an kind ecosystem. of ecosystem. Well, islands. Islands. Islands? Reefs. No, reefs. reefs is probably quite good. Marines, like, or like coastal. Coastal. Because he did like barnacles, didn't he? Maybe? Should we go for reefs, islands? Go for, maybe coastal, maybe, or something. Marine, something like that. M marine environments. That's not specific enough. It's coral reefs. Oh, it is reefs. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> other early works by Darwin focus on the geology of South America and offer support for the uniformitarian theories of which of Darwin's mentors, the author of Principles of Geology. Is this Charles Lyell? Oh, Could yeah. Be. He's definitely yeah. Yeah. Lyell. Yeah. Or Lyell. Charles Lyell is correct. And finally, Darwin's next major work after The Origin of Species was a case study a natural selection in which plant family, which includes the vanilla genus? Vanilla? I... Oh. Is it... It's not an orchid, is it? Orchid? That sounds... That sounds it's right. Yeah. Orchids? It is orchids, yes. Well done. Ten points for this. In US history, what alliterative name was given to the federal legislature of the original 13 states? King's Tricks. Continental Congress. Continental Congress is correct. Three questions on Shakespeare's Henry VIII, generally thought to have been a collaboration with John Fletcher. Farewell, a long farewell to all my greatness. Which character says these words on learning of the forfeiture of his property and land in Henry VIII? The historical figure on whom he is based died in 1530. Is this Wolsey? Yeah. 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 Would Cardinal Wolsey? It is Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. In the same scene, Thomas Cromwell tells Wolsey that which man has replaced him as Lord Chancellor, evoking the response, that's somewhat sudden, but he's a learned man. Uh, Shakespeare got his history right, right? I, yeah. Sometimes. All right. <laughs> Moore? It is St Thomas Moore or Sir Thomas Moore. About whom does Shakespeare's Wolsey remark, there was the weight that pulled me down, all my glories, in that one woman I have lost forever? Yep. Yeah. Anne Boleyn? I guess so. Berlin. Anne Boleyn is correct, or Anne Boleyn is using the play. <laughs> Time for a music round. For your music starter, you're going to hear a piece of popular music. For ten points, I want you to tell me the name of the group performing. Drinks. The Mamas and the Papas? No. Sorry. <laughs> Balliol, anybody want to buzz? Anyone got the faintest idea from this ancient music? No. <laughs> it's the Everly Brothers. All right. Ten points for this starter question. Music bonuses in a moment or two. At a little less than 1% of dry air, what is the most common noble gas in Earth? King Zoo. Neon. No, it's not. You lose five points. Balliol Schofield. Argon. Argon is correct, yes. <laughs> so you'll recall that we heard Wake Up Little Susie by... Oh, well, none of you recognise <laughs> Wake Up Little Susie by the Everly Brothers. It was written by the husband and wife songwriting team Felice and Boodler Bryant. And for your bonuses, you're going to hear three more songs written by the Bryants. In each case, please name the artist performing. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Firstly... <laughs> Tammy Wynette or Dolly Parton? Should I get for that? Tammy Wynette? No, that is Dolly Parton. Oh, oh we nearly sorry. got one. <laughs> this is going to be a long evening, isn't it? <laughs> Secondly... Tammy Wynette? 
<laughs> Tammy Wynette. <laughs> no, that's Roy Orbison. Oh. <laughs> and finally... The sun is out, the sky is blue. There's not a Anybody cloud to spoil a view. I feel like these are all older than me. Um, is it Dean Martin or someone like that? Nominate Crowther. Is it Dean Martin? No, it's not no. Dean Martin, it's Buddy Holly. Oh. <laughs> Ten points for this. The history of economic analysis and business cycles are among the works of which economist born in the Austro-Hungarian Empire? He is noted for popular... Bailey O'Connor. Schumpeter. Schumpeter is correct, yes. At least you know the important stuff. Your bonuses are on pairs of authors with similar names. In each case, give two surnames from the descriptions. All three pairs of answers begin with the same two letters. Firstly, two poets born in the 1590s. One wrote the collection Hesperides. The other was a clergyman associated with the metaphysical poets. One of them, John Donne. John, John and... Yeah. No. Philip Sidney. No, it's got to begin with D-O. Yeah. Oh. Similar, similar names. So you Dunn and the... Dunning, for example. Yeah, Dunn that and... sounds good. Dunn... Dunning sounds quite good. No, but it's... Do we know any poets Dunner? beginning with D-O? No. Dunn and Dunning? No, it's Robert Herrick and George Herbert. Oh. Oh. Secondly, the German poet who wrote the 1827 Book of Songs and the Nobel laureate who wrote Steppenwolf and Siddhartha. So, Goethe and... No, um, Steppen, Steppenwolf is... Is it Hermann Hess? Oh, yeah. Uh, and... Oh, Hess and... Hasse? Or... Are you sure Hasse? Hess and not Gunter Grass? I think... I no, it's definitely not Gunter Grass. Hesse. Okay. Hesse. Try, try Hess and Hasse, then, maybe. Hess and Hasse? It's Heine and Hess. Oh. Heine and Hess. And finally, which... Two 20th century authors am I thinking of. One wrote Catch-22. The other stage works include The Children's Hour and The Little Foxes. Well, Hella. Salinger. No, Hella wrote, Hella wrote Catch-22. Yeah. Hella wrote Catch-22. Yeah. Oh, Hella. 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 Oh, it's got to be H-E. Helling. Helling. Children's Hour, that's familiar. Helling sounds like a good name for a playwright. Hella? Is it? No, you're not Hella. Oh, Hella. <laughs> Hella and Helling. No, it's Joseph Heller and Lillian Hellman. Uh -huh. Ten points for this. Which book of the Bible concerns an attempt by the courtier, Haman, to bring about a massacre of the... Balliol Crowther. Esther. Esther is correct. <laughs> Three questions on mathematics in the 1830s. In 1837, which German mathematician proved an eponymous theorem on prime numbers using his L series? Its result had earlier been conjectured by Gauss. Right, well, hang on. Riemann did not mm. prove it because no. that's the hypothesis. Poincaré, <gasps> Poincaré, I don't know, is German. He's German, he's yeah. French. Uh, what's the other one that got proved? It's... Oh, Goldback? Try Goldback. Goldback? I don't know. Okay, it's... I think that's still unsolved, though. No, that is. Oh, I was um, going to say Gauss. Um... Should we just try Riemann? Yes. Yeah. Riemann. No, it's Dirichlet. In an 1837 work on the verdicts of trials, which French mathematician formulated the discrete probability distribution that has since been named after him? Pascal, Poisson? I think. No, Poisson? Poisson? It could be Poisson, that's a discrete... I was going to say Poisson. Poisson, 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 Poisson is a distribution. Poisson? Poisson is correct. <laughs> Noted for his contributions to higher algebra, which mathematician died in a duel in Paris in 1832? This is Galois. Galois, yeah. Yes. Galois. Galois is correct. Ten points for this. The binomial system of biological nomenclature is named after which Swedish naturalist? Balliol O'Connor. Linnaeus? It is Linnaeus, yes. <laughs> you get three bonuses on Welsh castles. In 1986, UNESCO designated four castles in North Wales as part of a World Heritage Site under a title referring to which English king? Ed, one of the Edwards? Yeah, it could Edward be an the early third? Edward. Yeah. Edward the Second, Edward the third. Third. Edward the third. That was Edward the first. Castles and town walls of King Edward, in Gwynedd, said to echo the design of the walls of Constantinople. The castle and walls of which town on the Menai Strait are part of the World Heritage Site? Oh, the Menai Strait is Anglesey. Yeah. Anglesey. So, uh, what town? Um, isn't is Holly... Carnarvon? There's a castle there. Should we? Yeah. Get... Wait. Um, is that a... what's Hol Hollyhead's and Anglesey? But it's not on the. Yeah. No, it's not. Bangor. Oh. Should we go for Carnarvon? Go for Carnarvon. Carnarvon. Correct. Yeah. 
In 1290, Edward I's chief architect, James of St George, became the constable of which castle built by him on a crag overlooking Cardigan Bay? I don't know the south. Cannon? Cannon? No, that's, that's what you just said. Uh, Any other Welsh castles? No. It's, you know what a Welsh castle? Carrick Cannon? No, it's Harlech. Ten points for this. One of the earlier collectors of the work of Paul Cezanne, which doctor was the subject of portraits by his patient? Balliol Crowther. Dr Gachet. Dr Gachet is correct. Well done. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the artist Laura Knight. From 1907, Laura Knight and her husband Harold were leading figures at which artist colony in Cornwall, close to Penzance? New Lynn. Nominate Crowther. Is it New Lynn. New Lynn is correct. Knight's 1943 commission, entitled Ruby Loftus Screwing a Breach Ring, portrays a young woman engaged in a skilled operation on what piece of industrial machinery? Um, no. it's, is it something to do with bomb making? I think it's like because she was a war artist, so right. what's well, making industrial armaments. machinery though? It's going to be a piece of machinery. Yeah. Um, try it. What about a loom? No, no. It's it's, it's, it's armaments manufacturer. I'm pretty sure. Um, what would you call it? The sort of thing. I don't know. Should we just get a Con bomb? Conveyor belt's not too bad. Conveyor belt. Okay. That's a piece of machinery. Conveyor belt. No, it's lathe. Huh? She was working on a lathe. Based on observation in 1946, Knight's depiction of what event includes white-helmeted military police, seated figures with headphones and a background of ruins and rubble? It's like a six. So it's, yeah, yeah it's a, bombing, a sort of bombing thing, maybe. So the bombing of Dresden? Or, or Coventry. 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 Cathedral. Coventry. Co Coventry Cathedral? Could be. The bombing of Coventry Cathedral? No, it's the Nuremberg Trials. Oh. We're going to take another picture round. For your picture starter, you're going to see a painting. For ten points, name the artist. Balliol O'Connor. Rubens. It is Peter Paul Rubens, Venus wounded by a thorn. <laughs> During the 2020 lockdown, the Yorkshire Museum launched a series of curator battles where museums use social media to present their best works on a given theme. One such theme was... Best Museum Bum, with the Rubens starter being the USC Fisher Museum's offering. Your picture bonuses are three more contenders for this particular battle. First, this is a detail of a major work by which French artist? Ooh, that looks... This David. looks... It looks a bit... It's yeah, classical. It's that kind of period, isn't it? it? Did David. he paint classical? Go for David. Or Delacroix? Yeah, yeah. No, David. Um, David. David. It is by David, yes. It's the intervention of the Sabine women at the Louvre. Secondly... Mm, that's familiar. Uh, the, it's very blue. It looks like um, a Degas, but yeah. you usually paint men. <laughs> Maybe like... Other, other impressionists of that era? Maybe you um, took a break and decided to paint a man for one. Could be a self-portrait. Mm, could be Degas. Go for it. Oh, I don't think it is, but Degas. No, it's Gustav Kaibot. Oh. Man at his bath. From Boston. And finally, this selection. Hokusai Hiroshige. Roughly yeah, the two yeah. Japanese artists I know of. Yeah. yeah. Hokusai. Try. Hokusai. Hokusai is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Represented by the middle letter of the abbreviation QAM, what value in physics describes the maximum displacement of a point of Prince a wave? Jackson. Amplitude. Amplitude is correct, yes. You get three questions on the author and translator Julia Lovell. A 2019 work by Lovell concerns which revolutionary ideology named after a national leader who died in 1976? 1976. Uh, 76. Um, 1976. When did Mao die? Na yeah. 1976, yeah. So oh, the ideology was asked. Maoism. So Maoism. Maoism is correct. In 2009, Lovell published the real story of R.Q., and other tales of China, a translation of fiction by which leading Chinese author who died in 1936? Any ideas? Do you know? 1936. Uh, Sun Yat-sen. Sun Yat-sen? No, it's Lu Shun. Subtitled Drugs, Dreams and the Making of China, a 2011 work by Lovell concerns which 19th century conflict? The, the Opium, Opium War. War. Opium War. It was. It was the first Opium War, in fact. Ten points for this. 
An important component of lipids, what two-word term denotes a straight chain of an even number of carbon atoms with a carboxyl at the end and hydrogen atoms ah. along the rest? King's Weaver. Fatty acid. Fatty acid is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on winners of the Academy Award for Best Picture. In each case, give the title of the film from the date of its release and the author of the source material on which it's based. Firstly, 2013 and Solomon Northup. That's 12, 12 Years a Slave, slave. Yep. isn't it? Yeah. 12 Years a Slave? You need the author as 12 well. Years a Slave is correct. Secondly, 1948 and William Shakespeare. Um, big Shakespeare in Chimes at Midnight, maybe? Chimes? Chimes. Chimes at Midnight. No, it was Hamlet. Uh, uh. And finally, 1963 and Henry Fielding. Any ideas? Henry Fielding? No. 60s films. <laughs> At uh, The Graduate. Yeah, all right, The Graduate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Tom Jones. <laughs> oh, okay. Ten points for this. The name of what taxonomic rank appears in the last words spoken by Shakespeare's Richard III? Uh, King Street. Kingdom. Kingdom is correct, yes. <laughs> a horse made kingdom to a horse. Three questions on physics. In physics and chemistry, what letter is conventionally used to denote atomic number? Is that A? A. 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 No, it's Z. Oops. Also conventionally labelled capital Z, what quantity measures the opposition of a circuit to the passage of current? Oh, that's resistance. Yeah. yeah. Resistance? It's impedance. Oh, of in the standard model of particle physics, which fundamental force is carried in part by the Z boson? Strong, maybe? Power, yeah, strong. Mm -hmm. Strong? No, it's the weak <laughs> nuclear force. Uh, <laughs> right, ten points for this. In December 1961, the basketball player Robert Kessler, dressed as Santa Claus... And that was on... <laughs> Balliol College had 145, King's College London had 95. Well, you didn't quite break 100, but you did pretty well, Kings. Um, you're going to have to come back again and repeat the ordeal. <laughs> if you win, you've got to win again in order to go through. And, Balliol, I'm afraid, even with a winning score of 145, you're going to have to come back and win again, too, in order to go through to the semis. But thank you both very much for taking part. I hope you can join us next time for another quarter-final match, but until then, it's goodbye from King's College London. Goodbye. Bye. It's goodbye from Balliol College Oxford. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>